much that an American journalist does in Iran is unobserved or unscheduled. You learn to grab onto the spontaneous moments. This guy with his little girl on the back of a battered motorcycle, he's curious about us. When our interpreter tells him we're American journalists, he has trouble believing that we're here. Then he says, if they could see where I live, they would weep. All right, we say, show us. It's not far off the main road in this tiny village, Kurahia Masjid, the furnace of the mosque. You want to know who elected President Ahmadinejad last year? This guy, Haidar Sistani, did. He, his wife, and one of their children make bricks out of mud, allowing them to harden in the hot, dry air. He has more than 12,000 bricks at the moment. 12,000? When you do the labor, you know the inventory. I put the wet soil in each mold, he says. For a thousand a day, he tells me, he earns about five dollars. Haidar rents this one-room mud hut. There's an old television, a fan, and a small kerosene stove, and essentially nothing else. It's a hard life, and he's an old-looking 36. But what about President Ahmadinejad, I ask him? I like him very much, he says. Why do you like him? He's good for us laborers, for us poor workers, he says. My wife needs an operation, but she couldn't get it last year because we didn't have insurance. Now we do. Ahmadinejad helped us, and now she's going to have her operation. Is America a danger, I ask him? A threat to Iran? I don't have any way of knowing, he says. I'm illiterate. Another day, we took a drive into the countryside outside Isfahan. We picked the roads, decided when to turn, where to stop. That's where we found Jafar Hosseini, a village elder, 75 to 80 years old, he's not sure of his age, observing as some of the village men spread fertilizer. They all voted for Ahmadinejad, hoped that the new government would provide chemical fertilizer to replace their own manure and compost. It didn't. Jafar Husseini is illiterate, but he's not naive. They didn't give us anything before, he said, and they haven't given us anything now. He chuckles. Nothing has happened yet. There's no difference. The owner of these 10 acres, Majid Ahmadzadeh, agrees that there are still big problems. Inflation, unemployment. But he likes that President Ahmadinejad is standing up to the Americans on the issue of acquiring nuclear power. And he, to my astonishment, invokes the non-proliferation treaty. It's in accord with the terms of the NPT, he says. Why does America have it and Iran shouldn't have it? We turn to the Ayatollah Mahdi Haddavi, he's a professor of Islamic law, to address the issue of nuclear weapons. Could they ever be used, at least defensively? No, no. Even as a defensive weapon, we do not accept it. In your region, India has nuclear weapons, Pakistan has nuclear weapons, Israel has nuclear weapons. To those politicians, to those Iranian politicians, who say, why should we not? Yeah, maybe they feel that they are in threat, as I said, and they think that they are supposed to have it, they are forced to have it. If so, it is not uh, an ordinary situation, of course, it is in a, a very uh, special situation. Whoops, there's a loophole you could march through with an entire military parade. So there do appear to be circumstances under which Iranian politicians may build and might even use nuclear weapons. We went to Gom, the holy city from which Ayatollah Khomeini resolved political issues according to religious principles. 
Grand Ayatollah Yusuf Sanayi was Khomeini's protege, and religious scholars come from all over the country to, quite literally, study at his feet. He takes the position that even the development, and certainly any use of nuclear weapons, would be contrary to the Holy Quran. But he is even more adamant on the subject of suicide bombers. When these young men and women believe that they will go immediately to paradise because they are martyring themselves, that is the expression that is used, martyrdom, they are incorrect. در آخرین جای جهنم جایگاهشون for sure it is incorrect not only they don't go to par in paradise they will go to the depths of the hell inferno don't talk to these men about hell each would insist that he is not contemplating suicide but answering a summons to martyrdom Still, they are signing up to volunteer as suicide bombers. It's more of a show than an actual recruiting drive. To our knowledge, none of those who previously signed up has been called. But it's an impressive crowd. And one of these days, they may be called upon to actually make the ultimate sacrifice in behalf of the Islamic Republic. Next, they like America. They are good people. Some even like President Bush. 